The work that goes into building the 53-man roster is never-ending. When the Browns added Vice President of Player Personnel Andrew Barry in January, he joined a staff facing an exciting challenge of rebuilding the Browns roster. Joining him is Chisholm Opara, Director of Player Personnel, a 12-year veteran of the Browns staff. For them, the ongoing process of player evaluation comes into sharper focus during training camp. I'm looking forward to this training camp because I'm looking forward to see competition. You know, it really, it really all starts with the area scout um, because a lot of these players, uh, they really get on our radar because there is a scout um, that, that goes to bat for the player's skill set. You know, there are players that, that go undrafted because, because the draft isn't an exact science that can produce in the NFL. These are the hard guys to find, and, and so there's an immense amount of pride within our department and for the individual scout when uh, we do find a player who ends up having those make it qualities. Dominique Alexander, he was a guy that I saw who was really athletic. Um, you liked his movement skills. He kind of has the athletic tools that you think that he's going to have a chance to play on in coverage teams, to play on kick return, and to make an impact on special teams early in his career. JP looked like a guy to me who was willing to do the dirty work as a blocker. He has a temperament that you kind of want at that position where he doesn't just think that I'm here to catch passes, running situations. He's really willing to stick his face in there and really compete. You don't usually see players with his size as effective as inline blockers at the, at the tight end position. And in the passing game, he's, he's a bit of a vacuum in terms of, in terms of his hands. Tracy Howard was a very intriguing prospect for us. As a matter of fact, you know, when he came in on his visit, one of the things that stood out to me was that this kid is confident. He's certainly a player that I know all of us are, are really excited to watch uh, during August, and, and he really should push for, a, uh, push for a roster spot. Nile was an impressive guy for me to watch. You know, he doesn't have ideal size and length that you want in the middle, but he's always taking up two blockers, He's squeezing down run lanes and he's making things easier for the linebackers to make plays behind him. So you could tell that he's kind of wired the way you want out of somebody who's going to make a living in the trenches. I mean, he's really one of those like fire hydrant, short, squatty, you know, nose tackles who can just sort of wad up the middle of the line of scrimmage. He will be a, uh, an effective run plugger. Kyle Rose was a guy to me who stood out because one, because of his position versatility, his toughness and his willingness to kind of absorb blocks and do his job so other people could be successful. He's a little bit like a Swiss Army knife in the fact that he can play multiple spots along the defensive line. Players with that skill set, they have um, you know, incredible, incredible roster value if they, can, if they can do that at a high level. When you hear that Matthews name, that's kind of royalty in the NFL. And they've shown a track record of knowing how to play and it's in their blood. And Mike is no different. You know, Mike is a slightly undersized guy out dueling and out playing people who are going in the first, second, and third rounds of the draft. Absolutely. I mean, he plays with low pad level, and we're certainly optimistic about his ability to, uh, to compete in camp.